Oh my gosh, so excited for the chat today. I'm um, Amina Khalifa is my guest and I met Amina about 15 years ago. We were having a chat. I thought it was only 10, but it was 15 years ago when we were doing our NLP and coaching training in Sydney. Amina is Egyptian and living in Dubai at the moment and she travelled to Sydney for her training and I met her then and we just had this beautiful friendship and we've kind of had that distant friendship since then. So this is the first time that we've actually chatted in person um, since then. Amina, a little bit of background. She's a mechanical engineer who is passionate about facilitating leadership and growth. Um, She's a certified emotional intelligence consultant, a practitioner, a facilitator and assessor. She's a certified trainer and master coach and neuro-linguistic programming, coach of neuro-linguistic programming, an ICF accredited co-active professional life coach, a certified experiential learning trainer, and an ILM approved trainer. So lots and lots of amazing qualifications there. And I want to find out all about how, what Amina has been doing in her, not only her business, but also in life and those keys to success and the magic that makes Amina who she is. So welcome, welcome gorgeous to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we, you said that we've been, uh, we, we've met uh, 15 years ago. I mean, uh, just off the record, uh, before the podcast, we couldn't stop talking because it was, I mean, it's as if we left each other yesterday. I, I mean, this friendship that we had, uh, this, uh, I mean, the connection that we made in in NLP, it was, it was beautiful. So I'm really happy to be uh here in your sharing the space with you, Catherine. Oh my gosh, I'm so, um, this could be a long chat. So listeners, um, get ready (laughs) for a long chat because we really haven't (laughs) chatted in person. We've had that connection and it really did, um, the NLP training, we created those very strong connections. There was a group, wasn't there, that created just such beautiful, strong connections. And I guess we've got those similar, we're, we're there for a similar reason to to learn and to grow and to develop and to use NLP in our respective businesses and lives. Um, Before we go down that path of what you're doing now, I would love to chat about you and growing up. So you're Egyptian. You were born Mm -hmm. in Egypt? Yep. Yes. In Cairo? In Cairo. In In Cairo. Cairo. In Cairo. Yes. What was it like living, but you're not living in Egypt now, are you? You're in Dubai. I have been living in Dubai for the last 24 years. Yes. So uh, we, we came here because my husband has, uh, is, is a pilot working with Emirates Airline. So we moved here. And since then, of course, I, I, I go to Egypt very, very often. Uh, but I've been, um, uh, we, made, we made a home in Dubai. Yeah. yeah. So what was growing up like for you? Did you have a big family? Did you have a big I have, um, I mean, I mean, I could say a small family, like it's, it was only my brother and me, but in Egypt, families are more yes. than just the, the siblings. So uh, my father, we have, uh, I have nine uh, <laughs> uncles and aunts. So you can imagine that with, uh, with all these cousins and uh, of course, from my, my mother's side, we didn't, I didn't have, uh, I had only one uncle who had, who had passed away, but with the, with the, with the family, with my paternal family, we were, we were a big family. And I would say a big family because it's not that you have a family and you do not see them or meet them, but all these cousins, we actually gather and we spend our birthdays together. So yes. Oh my gosh, that would be beautiful. (laughs) And so Cairo, we were chatting, how many, is it a hundred million now in Cairo? Uh, I think it's more than a hundred million now and not Cairo, Egypt. Uh, Egypt, yeah, that's sorry when I said that. Yeah, yeah, Cairo, I I, I hope it will not reach this. No, that's what I... (laughs) I cannot I cannot do that but uh, but yes uh, it's uh, it's an overpopulated uh, country it's a big i went there big, uh, probably 30 years ago i think i was traveling and um it's a big it was a busy oh my gosh i still remember the um traffic and the noise <laughs> was yes, like oh yes yes, yes 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 busier and busier busier and busier, busier. busier. yeah busier and yeah. busier And do you know one thing that really um, surprised me was how close the pyramids and the sphinx are to the city? 
And that was 30 years ago because when yes. we see images, when I've seen images, you sort of think they're out in the middle of the desert. Um, yeah. That really yeah. surprised they me. They are right in the middle of the city right now. Yes. I mean, after these 30 years, you should go and see. I would say that it is busier, more yes. crowded, but yeah. uh, um, uh, um, I would say thank God that um, – the in the, the roads has have been actually um developed and uh, um lots of uh, lots of bridges so the uh -huh. traffic is isn't as bad as before we are still more crowded and busier but things are in terms of the flow of the traffic it is it's a bit better but now the pyramids are right in the middle right in the middle <laughs> so, yeah i could imagine yeah. like... so there is a lot around around there so yeah did you realize growing up in Cairo how iconic and the historical importance did that or was it just kind of like this is my hometown how what was that like Well you know at schools in Egypt I mean part of the history is that they they, they let you feel this patriotism and then a lot of history about the pharaohs about uh, the pyramids and about how this is one of the seven wonders of the world. So you just have this pride of uh, mm. of uh, being there and, and the Nile and, and pyramids, Sphinx and the Nile. And not only in Cairo, but I mean, there is so much more in Luxor and Aswan. Yeah. So w they were investing a lot to let us fr at schools, to let us actually uh, feel, not, not only know about what we have, but feel this. So we we, we did and we... We visited and we felt uh, really happy being there. I mean, f feeling the grandiose of the pyramids, for example. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I have just got full body tingles when you share that because that pride and patriotism and, you know, it's, it is. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. It's iconic. And the history it and is. being, you know, part of that, one of the things – um, growing up in Australia, for me, there wasn't a lot of Australiana history when I was growing mm -hmm. up, and that was, yeah. you know, a while ago. There's more now. Um, I think we learnt more about other countries than we did about our own. So it's interesting. I think that's beautiful. I th that makes me very, mm -hmm. very happy. That Australia, I mean, I've been to Sydney. I, I mean, I loved I loved uh, Sydney. Yeah. I really loved yeah. it. And And, you know, from the moment I... When I when I was traveling there, um, I mean, I was I was a bit, you know, how it feels when you go to a country so far from where where mm. you are, on your own and uh, studying. I mean, do, and I was actually thinking, I mean, how will it be? I mean, me coming from uh, this end of the world, uh, speaking Arabic, and and actually I was in a French school, so I wasn't even in an English school. So how will it be? How will I be accepted? And and I really loved how Australians were so, I mean, they were so welcoming. I, I, I mean, from the first day I felt there were many other nationalities, but most of them Europeans. But I I, uh, I felt that there was absolutely no no issues and I, I felt safe. Yes. And you know, that is, yeah. you know, yeah. yes. generally yes. Aussies yes. are I very, yeah, generally Aussies are very welcoming and, you know, one of the mates <laughs> and things which is beautiful. <laughs> So did you grow up speaking Arabic and French? You went to and French and French. Yes. When did you learn yes. English? Was English part of that or not? Uh, it was. I mean, we were taking English at school, but on a minimal basis. Wow. But English, yeah, English is a, is. A, I, I believe that when you speak French, English becomes very easy. And then oh. I when, when I when university, I went to the American university. So I had like a couple of uh, of months before, I mean, as if um, before the freshman year, as uh, to to actually get uh, more of the language, and then uh, that's it. Because I mean, I was speaking English, yeah. uh, uh, it, it was fine, but I never had this uh, uh, Eng English um, like what. Um, you know, I always have a, a French accent to my to my English. Yes, I get that the the accent. Yeah, we... yeah the accent. Yeah, my husband and I went to Cambodia just before COVID. I was looking at running um, a women's program in Cambodia. So we were going over to sort of look for a village that we could run it in. And we lived in a village um, for a little, for, for a week or so. And we volunteered at the school and they just loved listening to English speakers 
speaking English. So they they, they get taught English by Cambodians and they have yeah. their, you know, Cambodian accent. So accent, they just yes. soaked up when John and I were there. <laughs> we, we tried to speak our best English, um, but they just soaked it up, I guess, just that that lived um, language. That was, yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. So I can um, is relate to that. Like, yeah. So French, English is a hard language I've heard. It's a confusing language. Did you find it confusing? I mean, no, I found it very easy. Oh, I mean, Arabic is not an easy language, especially no, with grammar. No, and French no. as well. French yeah. also is is uh, the, the grammar, uh, the, the yes. grammar in yeah. uh, in French is difficult. So once you have these two languages and you speak English, then that's it. Uh, and then all the movies. I mean, we watch the the, the yes. TV and the movies. So you, you English is in the in the back uh, back yes. of the mind. So yeah. it's uh, it wasn't difficult. So maybe maybe if you didn't speak these other languages, yeah. maybe coming from a completely different language, it would have been uh, difficult. Yeah. Can I ask you, Amina? I always wonder about this. Um, people who are multilingual. Do you just automatically, if you're speaking to somebody in Arabic, do you automatically flip into Arabic? Um, and the same with French and English. Like, is it just an automatic process for you now? Or what does your brain do? So uh, I would say no. And I will give you two examples. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first went to the American University, I was actually thinking in French and translating. So this is what was happening in my brain. Yes. Because yes. the English was not still, I mean, yes. uh, now it's not the same. But at the beginning my thought process was thinking so certain there would be some um, some words who would look uh, similar but would mean completely different so i would use this i would think in french even the, the even the sentence i would actually think about the sentence in french and i would like to put it in in english so this is how my mind was doing it because the english wasn't i was not yes. fluent in english yes. back then yes. so this is one thing to answer the the, the question yeah. Yeah. When you say flipping from one language to the other, I know very well. I, I mean, I do trainings in um, sometimes I do trainings in English and sometimes I do trainings in Arabic. And sometimes you are in a room uh, where actually uh, uh, you are doing English and then people will ask you to actually repeat because there will be some of the yes. attendees that would would want you to repeat it in Arabic. So um so they would ask me. And at that moment, because I mean, I'm focused, I'm completely in English. I just uh, I. I, it takes me a moment and I laugh and I tell them the words are not here. The words are still in English. Give me a time. So I yes. would, I would yeah. flip. So it is, especially when you're not, not just speaking uh, normally, when you really want to convey a message and you, you want to be articulate using certain terminologies, it takes a moment. It doesn't just automatically yeah. switch from. So it is harder when I'm doing a training in English or in Arabic, and I'm asked to quickly switch from here yes. to there, it takes, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, takes, yeah, it takes yeah. yeah. I remember, um, and, and I know we both work in that leadership space, I yeah. remember a couple of my clients were from non-English speaking backgrounds. They were learning English and they would do what you just explained then. They would translate it into their native tongue and they would think in their native tongue, then they would have to translate it into English. And it took the time, like it takes the time. Yes. And they were finding that a lot of people were not accommodating or not understanding. The perception was that they, um, because you're not thinking quick enough, therefore you don't know the thing. And they said it was really challenging and impacted um, confidence levels sometimes too. Um, so it's about that diversity, isn't it? Understanding and appreciating. Yes, of course. Diversity. Of course, of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course, of course. Oh my gosh, I love. I'm always intrigued. I'm not multilingual. I'm yeah. I'm not. So I'm always intrigued. So this idea, idea of diversity, Catherine. It's yes. um, uh, because I live in Dubai. Dubai yeah. is. Um, I mean, it's you. You find all nationalities, and you can never go anywhere where you find only one nationality. So the diversity yes. is there, yes. and I believe that there is a, quite a big tolerance. And 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 uh, to to all so this part of of uh, feeling not confident when you are around people, I mean everybody would be un not confident. Yeah. Uh, so 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 um, so this is this is something that fortunately enough, uh, I do not face it, or most of the people here don't face it because yeah. everybody is from from different uh, different places. Yes, and I think this one particular one particular client I remember, a young woman. 
and she was feeling that people didn't understand her accent, her language, she wasn't quick enough. She was like, I think she just needed some reassurance from somebody. Um, she was very Absolutely. easy to understand. And yeah. um, I think she just was like, oh, okay, cool. And then she just skyrocketed. She was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, you, you took me to Adri. Sorry that I'm, yes, because this please. is very important yeah. for yes, that. Please. You know, remember, of course, we were taken with Ted, uh, may yeah. he rest in peace, and Adriana, Adriana James. So Adriana, I remember at the beginning, I felt exactly this, not, not really yes. confident enough to be speaking in English. And uh, she had a, a small chat with me on the side when I was, I needed to be presenting. And I was, I, I mean, I was taking... Uh, bless you. I was taking the 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 train the trainer at that time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and 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 I I spoke about this. So she told me something that I will never forget, and I believe that this is a, a message that would be given to anyone speaking a different foreign language. She told me, you know, Amina, I wish I could speak Arabic the same way you are able to speak English. Yes. Yes. So I mean, this always. Yes. Uh, gives me that confidence. It's okay. Yes. It's not my first, it's my third language. So yes, it, exactly. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah. really great. Um, that's great advice, isn't it? That's yeah. really she reframed advice. it or she did the, her NLP. <laughs> yeah, did the NLP. Oh my gosh. When you just said that about that trainer training, <laughs> that was our training was intense, wasn't it? Yes. That was yes, intense was training. 150 participants. Yes. And it was or was it in the masters? Weeks. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah masters. Yeah, I think yeah, was yeah, um, yeah, twenty. And each of them days, were like yes. three weeks, and just I remember that trainer training, and where we had to do all the presentation. Yeah, gosh, I just remember so much. I'd forgotten. Yes, I'd forgotten yes, a lot about yes. that. Um, so how did you went to university? You said you went to an American university. You studied mechanical engineering. I did. What was yeah, that about? Did you know that that? How come? What was mechanical engineering for you? I mean, I actually uh, um, uh, hadn't, I mean, I, I always loved science, whether yes. it is uh, science like biology or physics yes. or math. And when I entered, uh, I was 16 years old when I entered university. I was young. Yes. And uh, uh, at that time, I all what I thought about is I want to study something. I know that what I love, but maybe something that would be good for career, for, for business. Yeah, sure. So yeah. I had actually declared the major of uh, business administration. And I had, I mean, you, you should have, you should come with a certain GPA to be, ex uh, GPA to yeah. be accepted. And I, I got accepted about this. But because I loved uh, sciences, I had an elective course uh, about introduction to engineering. And uh, when I had this course, the person or the professor who was giving this course was the dean of the, um, of the mechanical engineering. And at the end of the course, he came and he, he asked me to come to his office and he said, Amina, what is your major? So I said, business. And I remember he said, why? Oh. So yeah. I said, I really don't know. I mean, I uh, I was young at that time. Yeah. I said, but I see that you love. I said, yes, I love, but I, I'm thinking of career and I want to be working and all of this and business administration. He said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a deal with you. Uh, there is another course that I want you to take next semester. Just take this other course in engineering and then decide. Decide what you want to do. So I took the, the second course. And then after the, even before the end of the semester, I had actually switched to mechanical engineering. And this was, I mean, I love, I love the practical. I was not really happy in business. Yes. Uh, I needed to study a lot and all of these. It, it was not me. Uh, so, uh, so this is how I came to, uh, uh, to 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 study and be uh, them and actually from American University I was the first batch to graduate as a mechanical industrial engineering we had mechanical mm -hmm. material but I was um, the first batch to graduate as a mechanical industrial engineering ah uh, and were there many women doing it uh, we were actually in this batch we were uh, three or four only uh, uh, um, um, and what did there you... were men? Yeah, sorry, sorry. you go. go ahead. No, you no, go. No, no. You go. I, I was saying that there were lots, lots of uh, of of um, uh, of women, uh, but not specifically in the mechanical industry. Yes. In the mechanical yeah. industrial, specifically, we were two. But in the mechanical, in this batch, it was about four. Wow. And what did you do as a mechanical um, 
engineer? Like what what's the thing you do during the day? <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, well, actually, the first uh, job uh, I was uh, I did was uh, an internship in uh, in Norway, and I was working in a in an aluminum uh, factory. Yeah. And back then, I was working as a mechanical, not an industrial, yeah. but it was in in a factory. I was repairing um, electric cars, electric vehicles. So <laughs> this is what I was doing. Wow! 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 Wait! Yeah. So electric. So because because I, I am uh, 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 as as may, maybe it was it was more appropriate for my size not to be working with big uh, big vehicles. With big, but I was ones. I was repairing uh, the the electric forklifts and, uh, and wow. all of that. So this is this is this was my uh, so hands on doing. What was yeah, um we, we had a little chat offline when you were saying about your internship in Norway. And people were kind of about this woman from Egypt coming to work with us. What was their perception of this Egyptian woman? Um, I remember the, I mean, the factory was a big factory, but I wasn't the workshop for for repairing. And in this workshop, there were 31 males, one engineer, and I would be the second one. And all of the others were technicians. And everybody was waiting to see Cleopatra coming from Egypt. They didn't know, I mean, how would this lady look like? They were waiting for Cleopatra. And then uh, I was uh, I was telling them that, I mean, uh, I would like to actually in the weekend to be, to be having a car, to rent a car. And they looked at me and I said, what? Can you drive? I said, well, come on. First, I'm a mechanical engineer. Second, yes, of course, I can drive. Why wouldn't I drive? And they were looking and saying, in Egypt? Don't you actually go there on camels and on horses? <laughs> and I was so, I mean, back then, this was old time, uh, Catherine. Yeah. Back then, there were no, uh, th- there wasn't any internet. And this was not in Oslo, not in the, in, in, in the capital. It was in uh, somewhere else. And uh, people uh, thought that uh, you coming from Egypt, it's all about pyramids, about pharaohs, about camels and horses. So this was the perception. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I was not really accepted by the 30. I mean, 31, yeah. one of them was the engineer. And the 30 others, at the beginning, I was not accepted as a female, as a, coming from Egypt. What is she coming to do with us here? So, yeah. <laughs> so how did, did it take long to be, were you ever accepted? Yes, I was. It took me a week. Oh, wait, that's it cool. It took me a week. That's cool. A week when I when I actually, uh, because from the beginning, because I am a mechanical engineer, I was positioned yes. with the other mechanical engineer, which was like an, an office. Uh, the, the workshop was yeah. down and then the office, glass office up there. Yeah. And I was just there. I didn't know what to do. And then after some time, he was giving me some whatever paperwork or things to some things to translate from French about the 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 the, the vehicles and the yeah. trucks and then I, I said no that's enough I didn't come here to actually be sitting and looking at the people uh, let me go down he said you're gonna go there to work I said yes this is the best I mean this is my internship I wanna if I want to be an engineer I need to make yeah. my hands dirty so um, this is where at the beginning they were very reluctant and then little by little, I mean, I chose the oldest uh, uh, yeah. gentleman there to actually just to let them feel having this idea of I'm like your daughter and uh, yeah. teach me and train me and forget the engineering that I have. I am here to actually learn from you. And uh, and this is how I got accepted. And um, it was it was a great experience. That's um that's very smart to be able to do that. Yeah. How long were you in Norway for? How long was that internship? Uh, Three or four months. This was the, yeah, yeah. And then did you come back to Egypt to work or did you work around different countries? No, no, I came back to Egypt. I had certain, I mean, I I moved from uh, different places and then I stayed a bit with with no work because I was, I I was, um, I mean, I delivered a baby. I was married at that time. Yes. And I decided to actually just stop, take care of uh, uh, um, my child, and then uh, go back to work. And was it hard to go back to work after taking time off? Or was that? Uh, actually, that- I had planned for two years, uh, and they were not two years because I, because I got a second child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in engineering, they always tell you, 
four or five years and whatever you've studied is obsolete. Yeah. So you need to restudy again. So when I uh, when I went back, uh, I have a, a passion, uh, um, a family that relates to the family, which is horses. Yeah. So when I came back, I actually worked with um, in a business uh, with horses, and I actually uh, had a business with one of my best friends. He was my my colleague in university. He was a mechanical engineer as well, and uh, we had the business. So the business was related to horses, and at the same time. He was bringing in automatic gates, so it had a bit of engineering, mm. but I was actually responsible for the part of the horses and the tack and the organizing um, competitions, horseback jumping competitions. So it was both, I mean, doing some mm. things technical and most of the stuff was uh, horses. was related to horses. Oh so uh, it caused me a shift, but I was very happy with this shift. I still had the engineering mind and the engineering whatever used it but it was uh so i had my own business and and, and we had stables we still have the same the stables um in sharma sheikh now yeah oh, i do you know what i remember seeing those photos i think that was when we were studying together i was working with a couple of business colleagues and we were looking at running a equine assisted yes. learning program i that remember didn't get, i it remember didn't get off the ground <laughs> it didn't get off the ground but Oh my gosh, that was just such a, um, yeah, that was a, a a great idea. But I remember seeing those photos of you with your horses and just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So how did you make the transition? Was that part of the transition from mechanical engineering to working in that space of leadership and growth and development? How did you How did you make that transition? Well, this transition actually happened uh, really after this. When we moved to Dubai, yeah. uh, it was very hard for me. I mean, I've taken the decision with my husband that we're going to move to just have the, the whole family together. But I already had a very established work in Egypt. I had my business. I was at that time working with the International uh, Coaching, um, um, uh, International um, Horseback Riding Federation as um, a liaison between the International Federation and the Egyptian Federation. Uh, and I, I mean, I was established in uh, in Egypt and uh, it wasn't very hard, but I had taken the decision to just move the whole family together instead of having my husband yes. there. Yes. And so uh, when I moved there, I wasn't actually being able to really settle because I was like every month and a half, I would leave for two weeks from Dubai and stay yeah. in Egypt to take care of the business or yeah. to actually be because it was me and my 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 partner. So I was just, you know, I felt really as if I'm living one foot in one uh, continent, uh, Asia, and the other foot in uh, in Africa. And I was, you know, jumping from here and there. And after some time, I felt that no balance, no, I mean, that there is something. And I um, got introduced to coaching. I mean, I was coached. Yeah. And I really loved what coaching is. And I, at that time, I said, okay, I want to study that. So yeah. I started by studying co-active coaching. And then I got introduced to the whole idea. I mean, going back to the mechanical engineering, when I heard the name neuro-linguistic programming and the brain and the language yeah. and, the, yeah. you know, engineering, you know, all of these, Anthony Robbins, you, you, yes. you read about, yes. uh, I mean, you, you hear him. And it's all about the engineering of your um, of, of your brain. So the engineering part kicked in together with the coaching, and this is when I decided to actually travel to take it from to take the the there were actually uh, uh, um, schools in uh, in uh, in Dubai and everything, but I decided to copy excellence from uh, yes. the closest uh, you know what we, what we are taught. Yes. If you have, if you can afford the time yes. and the, the the effort and and the money to go somewhere, so this is what I did, and. Uh, and since then, I mean, it took me, to, did the NLP, did this. And when I came back, I, I started my, my, own, my own business in coaching and training and to give certifications to, uh, to NLP. So this was the transition. Wow. That's a big, I mean, it is, but it's not. Like I can see that transition. It seems quite, you know, logical, sequential, you know, just, looking at opportunities. I love what you're saying about the engineering of the mind 
and yeah. also the language and the development and the power in yeah. you know mastering um yeah. mastering yourself um yes i'm gosh i've got a million things just going through my mind at the moment it's like well what do i want to ask you next <laughs> i'm um so you 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 were you started your business and you were providing the coaching but also nlp accreditation so that's pretty full on yes, well. yes, you were doing yeah, that yeah. in dubai were you doing that in dubai in dubai yes i was yes. doing this in dubai yeah yeah and then you got approached by somebody to join their company didn't you that you yes i got approached you were head yeah. yeah i was actually approached by an egyptian um, uh, um, uh, fellow coach that we didn't know each other yeah. but she was actually uh, um, uh, founding her uh, own coaching uh, uh, and training uh, institute at that time or company and uh, she was looking for coaches and trainers and i got a, i got a message or a call from her and this was like 13 years ago and uh, she was telling me would you come and uh, do some trainings i see that you can you can give nlp or you can actually work as a corporate and i said corporate what corporate and she said whatever you're doing but you just do it, do it in organizations in the corporate world and uh, i uh, i joined her and um, and since then i mean i moved i mean all of these years i've been with this the company is one of the biggest uh, uh, organizations i mean if you just go on linkedin you will see that uh, um, i mean it started as a, 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 as a small uh, company and she had a vision and uh, uh, her vision was to actually make this as as a big company and here we are now and i'm i'm, I'm exclusive uh, with her as a senior a consultant and a facilitator and trainer. Wow. So, Do you want to uh, mention the company for people to find? Or we'll put it in the show notes. Do you want to? Yeah, it is, it's called the Human Network International, HNI. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is, uh, this Human is the company. Human Network and, International and you're a senior yeah, consultant. Yeah. Woohoo. That is exciting because yeah. I, um, yes. And you work with corporate. <laughs> you work with yes. Corporate. Now I work only with corporate. Yeah. I mean, even my 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 my, my small um, uh, entity that I had actually founded, uh, I never put in my, um, that I am I'm a CEO or anything because it it is my entity. It's still there. It's yeah. called Core Senses. It's still there. If at any time I am uh, I want uh, I do private coaching, so I use my coaching as yes. um, under the name of Core Senses. Uh, if I do any NLP, I use it as well. Yes. Uh, but uh, but um, uh, I am um, I mean I mean most of the time I am um, fully fully uh, corporate. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. And you were saying that it's super busy at the moment because yeah. you're going on um, vacation shortly, and Ramadan is when's Ramadan? Ramadan, Ramadan was Ramadan was, was yes. In, yes. yeah. So so. Uh, uh, you know that there were there are periods in the corporate training yes. in the corporate world uh, that uh, there are peaks and there are you know some some uh, uh, some sometimes where things are slower. So usually in Ramadan, which is a full month, people do not really prefer to do trainings because in Ramadan you are fasting, so you don't drink, you don't you don't eat. Yes. So it's not really easy to uh, yes. uh, to do a, a training. So we have this slow time. And then the the we had the, the what's called uh, Al Eid, so this is our feast after Ramadan. Yeah. And then things started to pick up. Now it is one of the busy, busy times. Yeah. So, so I was yes, I, I was um, coordinating diaries, and it was it was hard to get you because you were busy, busy. What um what is Ramadan? What what? That's Ramadan is uh, for Muslims. Uh, Ramadan is a month of fasting. Yes. So uh, people know Ramadan because people fast and they do not eat and they do not drink. But actually Ramadan is uh, for me as a, as a coach or the way I see it, it is, uh, it is self-management. It is an absolute self-awareness and self-management. It is not about only eating and drinking. It's about you managing yourself to be having the same energy and and it's also um i mean in in our religion it is not only about food it's about how you are um, you are able to actually continue behaving at your best showing your tolerance showing um uh, at that moment it's it's about sharing so it's about being able to feel how other people who do not have food do not so feeling feeling 
you know this empathy uh, yes. empathizing with people who who are less fortunate than you are yeah. so feeling how they can be thirsty they can be hungry and the sharing in ramadan so it's uh, it's all about how you can be the best self while actually maintaining this no food no drink and at the same time um not only managing your energy but managing all your spiritual you know um there is a lot of prayer there is a lot of uh, um, many things together with that so it's a, for me it's a beautiful month actually a month where people gather together so the beauty of the month is that you fast the whole day and then you eat uh, at sunset and at sunset usually we la- we like together i mean uh, here in dubai we it's I- i'm fortunate enough to have my kids yes. um uh, not kids i mean they are married <laughs> so <laughs> so the the family so we gather or with friends so it's a time where we fast and then we gather and uh, and there is a lot of um, good fortune i mean a lot of i i don't like to really use the charity thing but yeah. you want to make sure that as you eat you um if you have the means to uh, to help others eat as well so you find people around you where you can not not your friends but other people around you yeah, where you can yeah. Feed if you are so it's it's a beautiful beautiful month. Oh, I mean, thank you for sharing that because I um n- not fully understanding. Often it's about thinking the fasting, but when you're talking about the whole self awareness, self management, thinking about other people as well, there's a lot of. It sounds to me as though there's a lot of intention that goes into Absolutely. into yes. that it's not yes. just about yeah. not eat. it's not about deprivation it's yeah. about um the intention and the meaning and the purpose behind it um i love the word that you use as intention because intentionally in ramadan you should be fasting not just from food and and yes. drink yes. fasting from from saying anything that yes. would hurt someone from yes. being i mean fasting from uh, um uh, not managing yourself for example yeah. so being aware being this doing things intentionally and your presence yes. so feeling that i am present i know i am aware so this is why i link it i even i can remember that i've written in ramadan i've written like a small post in on linkedin to link emotional intelligence how can fasting help you in actually practicing your emotional intelligence being this awareness and this management how can you manage yourself there so yeah. i see a, a link there i see a link too when you were sharing that that's exactly where i was thinking it's around you know when we we're talking about nlp which is about personal mastery as well um, absolutely emotional intelligence is about um self awareness um self management and also about being aware of others and connecting with others. I think a lot of people, you do a lot of work with emotional intelligence, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes, I think a lot of people yeah. aren't quite sure what that is about either. They think emotional intelligence is just understanding themselves. It's do you want to, yeah, what is not, emotional intelligence? What yeah, I'm going to throw <laughs> it to you. You're the expert. <laughs> You know in simple in the corporate world I tell them one sentence because you know when you go to corporate yeah, sure. and you tell yeah. them and 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 I do a lot of work with the with the with the leaders and managers yeah. so they would say oh emotions we just leave the emotions outside the door. Yeah. So I tell them in one sentence emotional intelligence is your ability to make decisions every single moment decisions that you do using your thinking and feeling together. So it's not about using your your emotions it's using both of them. and this is the combination i mean this is what people need to understand that there is a big difference between being emotional yes and being emotionally intelligent yes yes and as you have mentioned it's not only with yourself it is your ability to 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 be aware of yourself to manage yourself and then to be aware of other people so talking about leadership it's self leadership yes. it's about awareness and management and then leading others whether you are on a leader i'm not talking about leadership position but leading you can actually lead others wherever you are so leading others is by being empathetic by being able to be aware of others and communicating and building connections and relationships with this um with this awareness so this is just emotional intelligence yeah I, oh, and, gosh i've just yeah. got so many examples of my a lot of my corporate clients um and please 
I'll, I'll, some of them are not emotionally intelligent. <laughs> a lot are, <laughs> but there's some of those yeah. missing links as well. It's one Absolutely. of the things that I observe is people are not um, aware of the impact that they're having with others, others and yeah. on others. Yep, and over Absolutely. others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so there's that. And you, self-regulation. You yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you as a coach, uh, Catherine, what you are doing is actually bringing this awareness. Yes. So yes. with the allowing people to discover and to know. Yes. So this is uh, any any coach co- any coach or coaching um, work is about bringing awareness as well. So it yes. is it is developing emotional intelligence. Absolutely. And, and, and I'm really very happy to have. Uh, I was telling you before the the podcast that um, uh, since I switched uh, yes. the, 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 the 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 I mean into coaching and training and leadership and all of this, I put it put it in my mind that every year I need to be doing a certification. And I went very deep with Six Seconds mm-hmm. Organization, which is one of the leading organizations about emotional intelligence in the world. And I've done almost all their certifications. I'm now a, a network leader and an ambassador. Because I really believe in this. And I believe in the connection between NLP, coaching, and emotional intelligence. They are all interrelated and we yes. use all of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I um, And we've got Amina's um, bio in the show notes. And there's a lot of qualifications. A lot of them we probably haven't even mentioned. You love learning, don't you? I do. You, you love. Lifelong learner. Lifelong, <laughs> lifelong learner. learner. And you're a deep. You're a deep learner. I think where I don't have nearly as many qualifications as you do, but when I am interested in something, I go deep into it. And I, I, am, and I can I'm, see yeah, that with yeah, you. I can yeah, see that yeah, with you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to dip into, we were talking about women in leadership and there's yeah. a lot of really, um, you, you work with men and women, don't you? It's not just women. Yes, of course. Yes. But yes, you were talking yes. about in Dubai and even um within Egypt, there's some really strong female leadership as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What so were some of the things is... that, um, gosh, I can't remember what we were saying about that. I was talking about some, maybe some of the perceptions of um, of just living in the, the in Dubai and Cairo mm-hmm. um, in Egypt, and you were saying that there's some really strong, powerful um, women leaders tell me a little bit more about i am actually working in dubai actually i work in dubai in saudi arabia sometimes in doha sometimes in kuwait but my 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 focus is in uae so dubai and abu dhabi and sharjah and so uae as as a whole united arab emirates so uh, i am really amazed by uh, women uh, and i mean young ladies young women if you look at the ministries and the ministers Young women, they are in power. And in especially in UAE, I think that this is the highest percentage if you look at the GCC or the Arab world. And I've been working very closely with many governmental entities and, uh, um, you know, at, at a higher level. And I, 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 I work with them and I see how they are, um, I mean, what level of education and what level of thinking, the creativity, the 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 power they have the will the 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 will and how the country is facilitating this for women and accepting them and and the diversity and the tolerance so this was really really amazing um i i don't think that this was in the in 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 the in the gcc area it wasn't like this years and years ago but no. now i mean they, they, the women are unstoppable they are unstoppable. I am actually. loving. I am loving hearing that because I'm. We have some really great female leaders in Australia in different areas within, you know, corporate government, community as well. Community I'm, as well, yes. Yeah, course. community as well. Politics. I'm not sure our women fare very well in politics in government, um, mm-hmm. but they're certainly helping, like you said, to facilitate um, opportunities to be able to um, development and growth and things around yeah. that. So I'm I'm thinking back, Amina, to when you were at university, when you were a 16-year-old, one of, you know, a couple of women studying 
a male dominated field. Um, it sounds to me as though you're a bit of a trailblazer in, and <laughs> you would be a um, great mentor for women as well and for the blokes. But I think you, you know, just, um, I get a sense that that you've been able to, through your experiences, that you have a lot to offer to other young women. Um, yeah, I just get that sense, yeah. You know, um, uh, Catherine, I've done a couple of um, leadership training, like women in leadership. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe, maybe you will relate when I say this, but we never think about this before. So usually when you do... Um, corporate, of course, women in leadership, corporate, and you get all these uh, women from a, from an organization or a company, whether it's governmental or another company, and we are there. And in the middle of the training, everybody realizes, why are we doing this training only, only for women? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if we really want to, women, I don't see that women need to be empowered. Mm. They are empowered. I mean, I mean, they get their own power. They are motivated. They have this intrinsic motivation. Uh, but the thing is that the um, uh, even the ladies there, they would say that the, the women there, they would say, I mean, we wanted this training, having our colleagues, the male colleagues with us. So they would actually, we will talk about many things and they would, it's, it's about changing the perception. They need to actually see a, a different perception of course we need to prove everything yeah. we are there but uh, but it's about having leadership as just women leadership uh, no we want them to be to be there yeah. and i hear from their colleagues as well we we would have loved to to come to the training to discuss this and to discuss um i mean um women women in leadership so yeah. it is amazing how we sometimes focus on okay we give this training for women but they discover that, um, I mean, other people need to be on board. We we coexist, and 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 um, yeah, I hear, yeah, I, yeah. I hear you. I've run women in leadership programs, and yeah. as you're saying that, um, my thoughts. Yes, I agree. I think it would be great that it is a leadership, and we don't need to have designated fee, you know yeah. women in leadership programs one of the things i found was the women attending it was a space for them to to share to connect and also to um, a lot of the women felt that they they weren't being heard at the table and Absolutely. that would be awesome to be able to share that with others and it's not just blokes not hearing them at the table but they felt that they they weren't being heard so strategies were around helping them to do that but I yes I'm thinking that would be very powerful to be able to talk about that in a combined forum absolutely I mean I mean having some space for for women to talk and to discuss and everything in a safe space and at the same time not only because leadership is for both, but I mean, there are things that are concerning women in leadership that yes. men need to hear. Yes, exactly. So, so exactly. Uh, there are, but, but of course there is that we, we should allow for some space, as you have said, because yeah. again, I, 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 I'm sure that you are always wearing this hat of a coach. So yeah, you want yeah, people yeah. to speak and yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. and, and this is how I do my, my trainings as well. I mean, I am, I'm a facilitator. Most yeah. of my trainings are done in a sense as if it was a group coaching thing. Yes. So, yeah. so Same. yes, definitely. Same. you want this space, uh, you want this yeah. space for, for, for them, uh, and so it's um, it's both both ends. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's I'm... not either or. It's both ends. Both you know and, this. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know this uh, idea about the paradox mindset. You tell me. The the, yeah. the 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 we talk a lot about the growth mindset. Yes, yeah. But there is another um, uh, um, uh, type of mindset that is growing. I mean, pe people yeah. are talking about it more now. That's called the paradox uh, mindset. So uh, it, in simple terms, it's instead of either or, yeah. it's both and. Yes. yes. It's not about compromising to get yeah. both, but actually yeah. you, you, you have these two 
um, ends of the spectrum yes. and how can you actually not bring them together but get something out of yes. each part of the spectrum so that's that's what oh my what gosh we I've got <laughs> yes yeah I've got one gig at the moment that that is the exact answer there's there's a lot of non-compromising and yeah. it's not an either or um but yeah. anyway I won't even go down that path um what are some of your personal practices for living your best life so you're living in um Dubai, Dubai. your husband's still pilot is he still flying yeah around? flying so you, in Emirates yeah do you fly around with him do you get um to sit in the cockpit with him uh, no no more after uh, S- uh, september 11 no cockpit is allowed uh, but oh. before that i was i was allowed and then Damn. now everything Damn. is so fast yeah that uh, i mean they have minimum stay i mean he goes a lot to melbourne and sydney and i would take me with you <laughs> but he spends not more than 24 hours so it's not worth it for them they get what what is called minimum rest yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't travel with him anymore. But we actually manage um, with Emirates Airline. Everything is so scheduled that from the beginning of the year, he needs to schedule all his vacations. Oh. So he likes to instead of having a, a, like almost a month or something vacation, he likes to have like two weeks and then a week here and a week there. And this is uh, what we try to do together is that we block these and we 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 travel. So we do something together. Uh, um, whether we go back to Egypt, uh, we have nice uh, places by the sea yeah. on both ends, on on the Red Sea and on the and on the Mediterranean, or travel abroad. So this is one thing that we enjoy doing. Uh, as I was telling <clears> you, I um, uh, sometimes I work full time, <laughs> like yeah. these days, every day training. Yeah. But actually, I'm not I'm, I'm not full time. So I like to have uh, uh, days where I can spend with the family, where I can go visit my mom. So uh, I do uh, I do I like to read, and I I always schedule some time for my my personal self development. Yeah. So whether whether um, attending seminars or do, going completely for a complete certification. And sometimes I do, I mean, I do sessions with the, as I was telling you, I'm a network leader with Six Seconds organization. So we do um, uh, um, uh, uh, free webinars. I mean, uh, bringing people to understand more about emotional intelligence in certain topics. So I give this, and this for me is is, my, is a time off because I love sharing yes. and it's a free space. So yes. um, so we talk about the topic in, uh, in there and... Uh, and uh, that's it. I love the sea. I love. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I love to walk by the sea. It's it's something that um, yeah enriches my soul. <laughs> yes, um, um, I know why we connected. Like yeah. so yes, much, yes. so much in common. Um, do you have grandbabies? Do you have grand? Why? Why? Why this question? People will know that we are that old, uh, uh, Catherine. Of no, course, you, I you're do. a young grandma. <laughs> you're a young grandma. I'm do a you... young grandma. Okay, yeah. I have three. Yes, I have. Oh, I have three, I'm and 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 pressure I'm on fortunate. I'm fortunate that they live here in Dubai with yeah. me. So they, they, I mean, this is my uh, serotonin and oxytocin. Yes. I call them my my. <laughs> I I have. I mean, I need to have oxytocin time uh, yes. uh, with my grandkids. They are yes. my oxytocin and serotonin. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I um keep putting pressure on my kids. Nothing mm. yet. So if they're listening, hurry up! No, not really. Yeah. But yes, I yeah, love. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, Catherine needs needs more. I mean, she is full of oxytocin and serotonin. I mean, I follow her to get this vibe of, <laughs> of the, the happiness, the happiness uh, high. But uh, oh. but I mean, she needs she needs uh, she's giving a lot. So so guys, bring her yeah. bring her some oxytocin. Give that. Give me some oxytocin, little grand oxytocins. Uh, yeah, I go um, to trampolines with them. To uh, and, uh, we go uh, swimming and jumping and running and all of this. And this is what this is the, the yes. they bring youth in my my yes, my, that my, is, yes. my life. Yeah. Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> Where's the holiday? Where's your vacation? Where are you going to? This next? vacation, I'm going to uh, to uh, Egypt, not in Cairo, somewhere on the Mediterranean. Uh, the vacation that was in May, uh, I was in. Um, I went to Switzerland to the mountains uh, oh, nice. and uh, and to Italy. So uh, 
That some, sounds, sometime in Egypt, sometime somewhere else. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> that just sounds beautiful. So where can our listeners find you? Amina, we'll have the details in the show notes, but mm-hmm. um, what's the best place on Instagram to find you? Or Well, I am more a LinkedIn person. Oh, you're LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I, I mean, I like to, uh, I'm not, um, uh, I'm, I'm guilty of being not very consistent uh, on uh, on posting. Yeah. So uh, I'm posting so LinkedIn. on LinkedIn, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So LinkedIn, I I, I love to give some, uh, um, you know, I, I I write posts that that will not educate, but just share the knowledge. So as yeah. you have said, I am a learner. I'm a lifelong yeah. long learner, yeah. but I cannot keep on learning without sharing the knowledge. So this is the that. complete flow. So uh, so it has yes. to be a flow. Yes. So uh, and on Instagram as well, I'm Amina Khalifa too on Instagram. Yeah. So uh, sometimes I put the same thing, but I focus more on LinkedIn. Okay. So we'll have the details if you would like to connect with Amina in on LinkedIn. Do that. Um, gosh, that went quick. I don't yes. know if the listeners I told. <laughs> yeah, that went quick. So thank you very very much for joining us and. I'm looking forward to connecting with you more and not leaving it for 15 years. So um, hugs and happiness to you. And just a reminder, if anybody wants to sign up to the Happiness Hive newsletter, um, and if you haven't done so already, just pop over to um, www.happiness-hive.com. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page and the email, I just have little tips that drop each week, each Wednesday. And I got a beautiful message today from one of the subscribers saying that the newsletters are a little ray of sunshine. And that just made my heart very, very happy. So thanks again, Amina, for that. Um, it's it's a dose. It's a, it's a real dose of happiness. Dose really. of happiness. Yeah, I yeah. tried. Not only the there. newsletter, but I mean, seeing you on Instagram, it is oh. really a, a, a it does it does of happiness. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> Thank, <That> you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Bye.